Now let's get uh, to our first uh, topic of discussion today. Over the years, the relationship between Nigeria and the Netherlands have evolved into a wide range of collaborative initiatives to foster economic growth and knowledge sharing. The Netherlands is one of Nigeria's key trading partners uh, that are uh, in Europe with significant uh, investments in sectors uh, such as oil and gas, uh, agriculture, renewable energy. This partnership has not only strengthened uh, economic ties between the two countries, but has also facilitated the transfer of technology, expertise, and best practices. But what more, what more do we need to know about this diplomatic partnership? Well, let's get talking. I'm being joined by the Consul General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Lagos, Mr. Michel Delin. It's good to have you here after a while. Thank you very much. It's great to be back again. Yeah, yeah. I just saw that video there. I think that was a meet, that was a meeting with Foreign Affairs Ministry uh, very recently. But before we go there, let's understand this relationship between Nigeria and your country. How has it been, and what's in it for both sides? Well, we always describe the relationship as an economic relationship True. because if you look at the trade numbers, uh, you're right in saying we are either the number one, two, or three depending on the season, a uh, business partner, trading partner of Nigeria. But it's much more than that, of course. It's also a connection between people, uh, information exchange, knowledge exchange, transfer of technology. And these are things, I think, where uh, we are now in a stage in Nigeria's economic development that we really need to come closer together. Uh, we know the economic situation that we find ourselves in in Nigeria at the moment. I like that you know that. <laughs> yeah, no, well, inflation is high. Inflation is high. Is high. Exactly. It is, it is, for everybody in this country, uh, it, it's a dire straight situation. Uh, and in that situation, I think we are here as the Netherlands to help our Nigerian friends, but that can only work if the Nigerian government, of course, also puts in place the right policies. Uh, and I think we've seen already some things. The Naira has stabilized. Uh, so there are some, it, it takes a long time, it takes a, a while before you can actually see the results of these policies. But I think more needs to be done. Uh, also from the policy side, there's a reform, uh, Commission on the Reform of Taxation. Uh, I think, you know, things like, like, like tackling insecurity, uh, the rule of law, all very important things. But we are ready to engage, and even more, we are engaging, because even in these difficult times, uh, for example, this year, the, the first three months of this year, we had three Dutch ministers who visited Nigeria. Wow. Three. We, ha we had three trade missions uh, that came in. So despite the challenges, uh, we are ready to engage. Uh, and I think the Nigerian government and the Nigerian private sector, I'm sure, uh, is also ready. But now it's a matter of you know, making steps forward together. I think there's something about Nigeria, I must say, that despite the challenges, international partners like you still always want to come in. Some say it's the population. What, what is it for you? Yeah, some say it's the population, some say it's the market, some say it's yeah. the biggest economy in Africa. Yeah. Today, this morning, I was reading the newspaper, and I opened it, and I was shocked because it was written there that Nigeria's economy next year apparently will be the number four on the African continent. So it has gone down uh, South Africa, number one, Egypt, number two, Algeria, number three, and Nigeria, number four. What went wrong? And how can we prevent this from happening again? Nigeria needs to find its drive again. Nigeria needs to become that number one again. Why are Dutch companies here? Why are international companies here? Yes, it's the market. It's the, the, the drive also of the Nigerian people, obviously, because if you set up factories here, you employ Nigerian staff, you work with them, you train them, you transfer knowledge and technology, you make things better together. Um, and therefore, Nigeria is a place where you actually want to invest because you see the numbers. You're the Niger part of ECOWAS, so from here you can export to other ECOWAS countries. But it's not easy. And I think we all know that. That's not a secret. It's not easy to do business in Nigeria because of the whole infrastructure, the electricity, but also, as I, I mentioned before, the, 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 let's say the rule of law. Mm. Stick to the rules. If this is the tariff for a product, make sure that at customs, that is the tariff for a product. Make sure that you don't have very long queues at the port of Apapa before you can bring out your goods mm. uh, or before you can export. For example, Nigeria, fresh fruits. Why do Nigerian pineapples don't find their way to the European market? Uh, it could easily be done, but you need a good logistics chain. 
we're ready to engage, but as I said, we also need the Nigerian government to, to be tougher than they've been so far. I totally agree with you that policy issues are very important when you try to strengthen trade. Uh, but let's talk about agriculture. Your country is known for this, and I see the smile already, number two agricultural exporter in the world. That is notable. And you also talk about high-tech agriculture. Tell us about this. Yeah, the high-tech agriculture, I, I know we, we, we mentioned that quite often, and our, our Minister for Trade was here, uh, and he also mentioned this. Uh, I would say it's also appropriate technology agriculture, because it's not just that you need fancy high-tech stuff, you need the appropriate stuff to produce tomatoes in Nigeria, for example, I take the example of tomatoes, in Nigeria uh, that, that from, as they say, from farm to fork uh, can actually uh, be kept uh, and don't uh, not uh, post harvest losses and all kind of problems and low yields. Now we've done we've started uh, three years ago with an agricultural pro project in Kano and Kaduna. Uh, we've trained 50,000 farmers. I just saw the report last week. It's extremely promising. A uh, hundred percent increase in yields uh, for certain products. So it really works if you help people if you train people. Um, and that means that these products are then available for, for example, the market in Lagos. On the other side, you mentioned high-tech uh, uh, agriculture or horticulture. Uh, we've just uh, commissioned uh, a greenhouse complex in uh, Abiyokuta, where Dutch companies sort of showcase uh, what you can do with greenhouse technology wow. and how you can do that. It's called Greenport Nigeria. Uh, and we also train young people, young Nigerian farmers, uh, to work with that technology. So we, we're engaging in that field. Yeah. Mm, that, that, that sounds re really good. Let's, let, let me take you back to uh, the, the, the meeting, one of the meetings, I think this particularly with the Dutch Minister of Foreign Trade Development Cooperation. A lot of MOUs were signed, or some MOUs were signed. So that means the talks are already on the table. Is that what it means? Exactly. Well, the MOU is sort of a framework. So the MOU that was signed uh, is basically an agreement between the Dutch government and the Nigerian government okay. that they will have uh, meetings every year uh, to discuss different subjects. And these subjects are basically political cooperation or exchange of political discussions, uh, the economy, trade and investment, obviously, uh, and the other one is uh, consular affairs migration, uh, which is also of interest of, uh, of both countries. Uh, so what was signed was indeed the agreement to continue with these uh, meetings, uh, and the, the, the next one will probably be in the Netherlands somewhere in June or July. Mm. Now, for, for me, I, I'm always interested in transfer of knowledge. Uh, you see international partners like you have the experience that countries like us need to tap into, just like we talked about agriculture and all of that. What more are we doing to share knowledge uh, among both countries? I think I, I'm keen about that. Uh, yeah, we are, we are obviously, uh, what, for, just to give you a few examples. Thank you. Um, in the ICT sector, Great. we are now training a group of young Nigerian programmers uh, to work for companies in the Netherlands. And that's a training center that was set up in Lagos, uh, also with the assistance of the Dutch government, but it's run by a private uh, company to train young Nigerians in coding. And there is a high demand for that everywhere on the planet. So uh, obviously in Nigeria also, but also in Europe. We're in the same time zone as Europe. So, you know, they can work from here, provide services to companies in Europe. And that's a matter of training that it, you can immediately find a job from there. Uh, agriculture, we, we already mentioned. Uh, solar, uh, we have engaged a lot in now in solar technology. We uh, are in the process of setting up a solar marketplace where supply and demand in the Nigerian market can find itself together with investors. So, you know, I, I run a small company. I want solar panels on my roof, but who can do that and how do I finance it? We bring that together, but that also has a training component whereby uh, we train young Nigerians in installing and maintaining solar panels. So a lot of things are happening in, uh, in that field. Uh, another one, the last one, is a circular economy. Uh, okay. We recently had a, a, also a trade delegation and a whole uh, strategy week in Lagos, uh, but it was actually for the whole of Nigeria, on uh, circular economy. Uh, it, it, it's a long story, but basically 
we are exchanging information, we are exchanging knowledge, uh, and we're working together very closely with Lego State uh, at this moment. For example, what do you do about waste? The waste problem, recycling, uh, how can you turn waste into energy? We have an electricity shortage, so there are Dutch companies that are actually quite far ahead already uh, in turning the waste that we see uh, on the different landfills into electricity uh, for productive use. So we are really, really making, making steps in that field. Mm. It sounds really good. Uh, almost finally, I, I, I saw this when I was in my research. Top exports uh, were petroleum oils, uh, oils from fish, uh, I think uh, milk, and other agricultural products. And top imports from Netherlands, uh, of Netherlands from Nigeria, cocoa and uh, similar oils. I, I'm looking at some of this. I think Nigeria can offer more. What more would you, would you need from us? <laughs> we can do more than this. <laughs> I know Nigeria can offer a lot more. I was already mentioning pineapple just as an yeah, example. Yeah, you said that earlier. That's you true. know, in the trade balance, the trade balance is in favor of Nigeria by about uh, 3 billion euros a year. Uh, so uh, Nigeria gains a lot from the Netherlands. That's basically because Nigeria sells their oil to the Netherlands. Uh, there was a time when then we would sell back uh, refined products, but obviously we have the Dangote refinery now. Uh, so uh, congratulations Thank actually you so much. on, Thank on you. that. It, it, Thank you. There. you expect Potakots to come on stream soon. Right. <laughs> but as a result of that, you know, uh, uh, so that would we, we, we export less to Nigeria now. We All still right. uh, export quite a lot of, uh, of uh, fish, for example, um, and, and services, as I mentioned. But there are also products that Nigeria can export more. One of the things uh, is uh, cocoa. Very uh, simple. Uh, if you've seen the cocoa prices, they're sky high now. So uh, cocoa farmers in Nigeria can earn a lot uh, on the international cocoa market now. And coincidence or not, the international cocoa market center is in Amsterdam. Uh, so a lot of the Nigerian uh, cocoa is exported to the Netherlands. Uh, and we see a steep increase in the numbers, basically because the price goes up. So these are, these are things that are low-hanging fruit, literally. Mm, uh, but there are also other things that Nigeria obviously can export in the, in the agricultural uh, sphere. And of course, I should not forget culture, you know, music, fashion, art. Uh, <laughs> we, we, that's, that's, those are sort of in the services maybe more than in the industrial uh, goods, but Nigeria is a huge exporter. And why is that? It's because the world likes Nigerian products. True, true. That is something that we need to explore more, even with the African continental free trade area, moving out culture, services and not more of goods and all of that. Well, let, let, let's talk some, uh, look at some global issues before we wrap up now. Russia and Ukraine war is still there. Uh, Israel amass, you know what is going on, and the strikes and all of that. But generally, my question really would be, what does this hold for the entire globe? IMF, World Bank is still saying, recovery seems, well, fragile. You need to be cautious and all of that. But what are your thoughts, generally? considering this war. Yeah, no, I mean, apart from, obviously, the, the tragedies that these both situations, these both wars uh, pose, uh, but if we look at the economic side, uh, markets always preempt. So when something happens, they preempt a shortage mm. or a price. So you see uh, the price of oil goes up, the yes. price of grains goes up, uh, food uh, prices go up. Um, and that is, that is what happened. With the Ukraine war, we, we were very worried because a lot of countries in, on the African continent depend on the imports of grain. Uh, so in the beginning, the price went really steep up. I think now it has stabilized a little bit. But all these things are obviously uh, not good for anything or anybody, uh, but also not for world trade. We see now uh, what happens with the, the Suez Canal, uh, ships yeah. being attacked. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a serious, uh, these are serious issues on a humanitarian basis, but they have their economic impact. Honestly, uh, all of this will affect the value chain, uh, or movement of products, raw materials, uh, and all of that. But, but, but you know, before I let you go, do you see light at the end of the tunnel? Everyone is optimistic. But despite the challenges, we will make it. Do you think so? In Nigeria? Yes, of course we'll make it. Uh, but, you know, we should have already made it. That's the problem. We, we lost a lot of time. Uh, and I would really like to, to appeal to the, you know, the, the, the Nigerian government. Yes. And I know they cannot do it alone. But there are some very good people in there who know exactly uh, how to tackle the issue and what the problems are and how to solve them. 
uh, that we will solve them together and that we make sure that Nigeria is basically a state of law where things happen as they are supposed to happen, uh, predictable uh, to do business for Nigerian business in the first instance and then also for international business and international investment. Next week, Thursday is the King's Day. Let me allow you to talk about it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't say anything about that. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, so our national day basically uh, changes because it's the birthday of our monarch. Okay. Uh, and uh, the birthday of our king right. uh, is on the 27th of April, but right. we celebrate it on the 25th. Uh, right. this year. Right. Uh, so yes, uh, in Lagos and Abuja, bring together uh, friends and the Dutch community uh, to celebrate together. So hopefully I'll see you there. I well, I'll, I'll see you on Sunday before then. I've been speaking <laughs> to uh, Mr. Michel Delling. He's the Consul General of the Kingdom of Netherlands in Lagos. Thank you so much. Let me get a handshake and have a great weekend. I'll see you on Sunday. You will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break when we come back.